I am so delighted. We as a family are so delighted that we are able to celebrate this Advent season with you all. And we thank God that despite the whole world being in a lockdown with travel restrictions, but here we are together experiencing and sharing God's love in our fellowship. That's amazing. So before I bring in my message, let's have a word of prayer. Join me in. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we submit this time into your hand and I pray that your Holy Spirit guide and share the message that you have intended for your people. We pray for open heart as we receive your message, O oh Lord. And we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me share my screen. Okay. One second. Okay, the theme for the second week of Advent is about the arrival of the kingdom. The kingdom which has already inaugurated in the incarnation and is foretold in these passages. Well, Isaiah 11 talk about supernatural peace and joy of the kingdom. Psalm 72 talks about vision of a kingdom well ruled. And Matthew 3 talks about heralding the arrival of the rightful king, the God himself. Now, last week we heard Pastor Devraj talking about Advent being the season of preparation to proclaim the message of hope as foretold by John the Baptist. Coincidentally, I am also speaking about preparing ye the way of the Lord. Though we didn't discuss it in between, but this seems to be a recurring theme for this season. In Matthew chapter 3, uh, Isaiah talks about the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, John the Baptist was the wilderness voice of that time. Someone outside the everyday self-centered rhythms of human society. Who was calling the people back to the ways of God. To prepare for the movement of God. And he was doing so in a bold way possible, telling them to start over. And well, today I want to talk this in two aspects. First, what does prepare ye the way of the Lord means to us in this season? Well, Christmas can be one of the most daunting time of the year. As we stampede into the stores for Christmas shopping, we watch sentimental movie marathons, we make plans to go on holidays, we spend hundreds and thousands on a plane ticket just to see each other and spend time with our loved ones. Well, it's also a time when all of us are looking for a sense of belonging. We all want to belong to somebody. Nobody wants to be alone in this season. And David says in Psalm 143, I stretched out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Deep down, we all are looking for a communion beyond our human relations. When we are in this wilderness of doing worldly things, John tells us to ache for connection with God. And this is the taproot, the lifeline of our lives. John is saying, pay attention. A beat Christmas or any other celebration, achievement or any possession or any relationship on earth. It can't fill us. It can't heal us. Our lives should not be pinned on anything worldly. But instead, our lives should be pinned on Jesus. Now, we want to make straight path in this wilderness for the Christ of Christmas. We want to share with everyone that Jesus is our 
everlasting hope. Now in John chapter 4, 13 and 14, we see Jesus talking with the Samaritan woman. He says, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. A need for belonging, a communion can only be filled by Jesus. Now John calls us out to share that Jesus is the message of hope for all humanity. And sometimes it takes the wilderness voice which has jumped out of society's rhythm and tail chasing to remind us of this truth. Moving on to the second point. Now, how will we make this wilderness voice be a life-changing relevance in today's world? How will you prepare room for Jesus this Advent? How will you make space in your heart in the midst of Christmas shopping, visiting friends, family, holidays and parties? And one way of drawing the relevance to this wilderness voice is to put our effort in giving when the focus of the whole world is on receiving. Now, well, you might say now, Sachin, it has been a tough year in pandemic. We lost jobs, we received salary cuts, we lost our loved ones. We are barely surviving. What can we offer this season? What can we offer? Well, I would simply say, let us share Jesus, the source and embodiment of our hope and love in action. In action. Now, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with the living God. It's a way of living. Now, the world out there is so divided today that we have taken out the whole relationship and made this as a mere religion of do's and don'ts. The moment we talk about Christ with people, they outrightly think that we are talking about conversion, especially in India. The essence of Christmas is merely reduced to putting decorations, buying expensive gifts, partying, visiting places. Unfortunately, during the whole Christmas, we missed out on Christ, who is the reason for the season. Well, it's time for us to share the gospel in action. Share Jesus and his message through our day-to-day -day actions. And how can we do that? Involve. Do we see a hopeless, lost friend, colleague, or neighbor? Let's go. Give a listening ear. Pray and offer a hug of reassurance. That everything is under control. Let's involve in people's lives. Participate. Let's cook some extra food or order more and participate in eating with those who are struggling or lacking in this season. Let's participate. Well, time is the most precious commodity, right? So let's visit, make a phone call, a video call to the elderly people in our families, our neighborhood. And just spend time with this, them. Pray for them. Let's invest our time this season. Well, Christmas, it's all time. Good time to reignite or cement old bonds of friendship. Well, you saw the start of the sitting. Our Uncle Anand has come and I'm so happy. <laughs> He's my dear, dear friend. Well, now, instead of spending too much money on ourselves this Christmas, new clothes, gadgets, expensive parties, lavish travels, let's save a bit and make somebody's Christmas more colorful and joyful. Let's volunteer. Let's volunteer our time in community kitchens, old age homes, orphanages, and homeless shelter. Let's spend time and through that, let's share the message of hope. But remember, we are often busy in volunteering, spending time in ministry. But let's not forget to 
spend quality time with our loved ones well some would argue we are old and fragile what can we offer well i would say offer your comforting smile of joy hope hug and give certainty to others who are in need you can be involved in ministry at any age well in current times our relationship within our families and in our communities have been polarized with no tolerance either due to political ideals conspiracy theories fake news or perception differences of opinions have divided us even more take out this time this season to unite people in truth and find common grounds be an agent of peace and patience remind everyone that we have lot more in common than what differentiate us let us be a blessing now these are just top some of the things that came to my mind but you know yourself you know your family you know your neighborhood you know your society find ways where you can be a blessing may we not be seen as anything but an example of grace in the jungle of human greed this season an example of hope and love that is far beyond and far greater than any earthly holiday can bring us remember though while we are an ambassador of hope and love in action we are just nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved our soul 